um, I read something that you wrote yeah. about, and it was about the word complimentary. Oh yeah, yeah. And when I read that word, it reminded me of like a Buddhist yin yang, yeah. and I couldn't understand what you were trying to say because you surely were talking about something more scientific than a yin yang. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned the yin yang, but that's exactly what Niels Bohr adopted for it when when he uh, when he was given a equivalent of a knighthood in, in Denmark. That was the symbol he adopted for his... Uh, oh, when you get knighted, you pick a symbol? Yeah, and he, that's what he picked, the yin-yang. Interesting. Because, he, yeah, he saw a deep connection with complementarity. The idea of complementarity was that the reality is so wide, so broad, that you can't exhaust it with one single uh, explanation. That you need another explanation which could almost set, set beside this one appear paradoxical. Mm. So, you know, you say the electron is, is, is a particle, then you say the electron is a wave, but the two, you can't, to put them side by side, it doesn't make sense that a thing that is like a little bullet is also stretched out over the whole universe as, as a wavy thing. Right, that's yeah. hard to believe so, is true. So, so that's what's, com and Bohr felt that complementarity went way beyond um, uh, just, just physics, it went into things about consciousness too. Yeah. I want to get into that, but I want to ask you something. I was speaking to a friend of mine who's a physicist about complementarianism. Is that a word? Complementarity. Complementarity? Yeah, that's what it awesome. is. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Complementarity. Yeah. And I said, I thought it meant that two seemingly opposite explanations of a phenomenon yeah. are actually the fullest way to describe a phenomenon. Yeah, that would be it. Yes, you, you, you can't exhaust it with one. And he said that I was an idiot. Oh. No, he said that... Um, and was he right? Yeah, he was probably oh. right.